The Lotus 88 will be a forever caged beast that never ran in anger. Banned before it had even had the chance to prove its worth, Colin Chapman's design genius produced a remarkable concept that involved two chassis, one inside the other. By making a clear physical divide between the two elements of design, Chapman conceived something that was unique, but also feared by other teams, manipulating the popular 80s ground effects to incredible levels. Yes, yeah, so this car, kind of, you see very often, when you follow too much an aspect of a Formula One car, you lose uh, the efficiency of the compromise. In the wind tunnel, the Lotus 88 was uh, fantastic. Huh? because the, the, the fact that to divide the two combination, aerodynamic and chassis, was a very clever idea. A wonderful idea that was working very well in the wind tunnel with the air for very, let's say, good. All right, so hold on a second. Let's get back to the fundamentals of ground effect. Let's look at a contemporary of the Lotus 88, the Brabham BT-49. The underside featured two Venturi tunnels. At the point lowest to the ground, the air passing underneath accelerates and builds a low pressure area that develops a huge amount of downforce. Skirts help seal that in, amplifying the effect of the undertray and pulling the car closer to the ground. The stronger the ground effect, the less wing needed, which meant that cars went faster. And faster. And faster. It's pretty evident how strong the effect was and how little wing was needed on the 88 by the fact that it ran with a barely visible front wing just to balance out the rear. Brabham with its BT-49 pioneered and exploited the hydropneumatic suspension system that let the car run super close to the ground and increasing the effect. The consequence of all this was that the cars had to be extremely stiffly sprung to maintain an even seal, throwing the driver around and creating a very uncomfortable ride. Bumps and rises in the track, illustrated here, give opportunity to break that air seal with the skirts leaving the ground, so air flowing underneath the car leaks out, while the ambient air outside can trickle underneath. So how did Chapman combat this unwanted effect with the 88? First of all, he created a regular, normally sprung chassis with a strong carbon fibre monocoque that was easier on the driver while building a second chassis around and over the primary chassis. The second chassis moved and manipulated itself with the contours of the road, maintaining an even seal and constant ground effect. As the inner chassis could move and react to the track as required, the outer chassis was practically immobile, safe for being able to drop closer to the ground at high speeds. Since the regulations didn't specify when the car had to meet the minimum ground clearance, Lotus could cheekily recover the benefits of the band skirt on the track while meeting the regulations when stationary to meet the approval of the stewards. Teams were outraged and protests were lodged before the 1981 season even kicked off at Long Beach. While the car was within the written letter of the regulations, the FIA deemed it against the spirit of the regulations. Lotus had to revert to an older Lotus 81 for the season. An amended car, the Lotus 88B, was put forward by Chapman to scrutineers, linked to the Royal Automobile Club at Silverstone, hoping that a favour from the old boys club might get him onto the grid for Silverstone. But again, the FIA intervened and said, if the cars turned a wheel, they would be yet again disqualified. The concept was certainly good enough to worry teams and technical delegates, but that didn't necessarily mean it was actually any good. On the track, the car was a total disaster. And I believe that both drivers, I know from Elio De Angelis, because he told me, were very, very happy when they banned the car. Because if everything was working well, the downfall was incredibly. If the airfall was going on top of the bodywork, so pushing down the car to the ground, having a wonderful downfall, so the car was very good, but very often, the hair flow was going inside the bodywork and the result was to have a lift. So the driver was going from maximum downforce to even lift. So the car was totally unpredictable and very, very dangerous to drive. So they were very released when the car was banned. So although a smart concept, De Angelis was ultimately relieved to see the back of the 88. Lotus gave up on the cause after that limping on with the 87 chassis for the rest of the year. Ground effects were completely eliminated two years later, meaning the concept of the Lotus 88 
was never able to show his true potential. Yes, this is, this is a problem, as I said, uh, trying to be innovative uh, as, uh, as, like, uh, as a duty. Uh, so Colin Champion was fantastic because he made also Lotus before my era, Lotus uh, 25. So his car was really always ahead of everybody. But sometimes he was doing even too much. And as you said, the turbo car was again a, a, a wonderful experiment, but uh, we can consider just an experiment and unfortunately wrong as a result on the track.